Hello YouTube, this is Detroit Borg and welcome to my 200th video on YouTube. And because it's a milestone video and the end of 2010, I thought I'd make this video special and basically recap all of the brand new Apple products for 2010 and give you my top five. What I'm zooming out on now is my 27 inch iMac, which actually was new in October 2009, but I purchased this in March 2010. So I'm gonna keep this off my top 10 list just to make it fair. Now this did receive a spec bump in the middle of the year, but I'm gonna leave this off because it's not a major new product. Uh, so what I'm gonna focus on are all the newbies and on the left is the iPads. So the iPad on the left is the 3G iPad, the one on the right is the Wi-Fi only iPad, and the 3G iPad is sitting on its standard iPad dock, and the Wi-Fi model is sitting on the keyboard dock. So that is a very nice accessory that I also purchased. Here is the iPhone 4, also in the upgraded or repackaged universal dock. Down here is the MacBook Air, 11.6 inch. To the right is the new unibody Mac Mini, Below that is the Magic Trackpad. And here we have the second generation Apple TV, the fourth generation iPod Touch, the sixth generation iPod Nano, and the fifth generation iPod Shuffle. Although this list is mostly about hardware, Apple did release some major new software upgrades, including iOS 4.0 for the iOS devices. iOS 4.0 also introduces the iOS nomenclature, which we now use to refer to those devices. And of course, there is iLife 11, which is a major update to the iLife suite. So let's go on to the major list. Number five is the iPod Touch fourth generation. This is the first complete revision of the iPod Touch in two years and brings many of the outstanding features of the iPhone 4 and iPad. The Touch adopts the Retina display from the iPhone 4, 1 GHz A4 Apple processor, and 256 megabits of RAM, all of which brings the iPod Touch up to a performance level similar to the much more expensive iPhone 4 and iPad. The iPod Touch also picks up two cameras, a VGA camera for FaceTime and a 0.7 megapixel camera for stills and HD video. The iPod Touch isn't a perfect product. Battery life is still poor, the display is TN instead of IPS like the iPhone 4 and iPad, and the front glass is more flexible, which means the display is prone to pressure distortion. However, at a base price of $229, the iPod Touch gives consumers access to Apple's best technologies at an unbeatable price. Number four is the second generation Apple TV. Once called a hobby by Steve Jobs, this is the first time that Apple has really taken this market segment seriously. The Apple TV is very easy to set up and use with the included remote. With the addition of Netflix, the Apple TV now gives you access to the largest online repository of film and TV shows, along with access to the excellent iTunes store. With 1 million units sold this quarter, it appears Apple has finally hit the right note for consumers. A big part of the Apple TV's success is the $99 price tag, cheap by Apple standards and undercutting most of the competition. I consider the Apple TV an essential accessory to an iTunes household since it will stream your audio, video, and photo content to your home theater from your iTunes library, or it will work with AirPlay to stream content from your iOS device. In the end, the Apple TV may not be the most fully featured media center hub on the market, but it's the easiest to use and the only one that fully integrates with your existing iTunes library. For number three, I've chosen the iPad. Now I realize the big story here is the fact that I haven't made this my favorite device since it seems to top the charts for everybody else. Now the iPad is a very innovative product, basically setting the stage for a new way of computing that brings the best of iOS and expanding it to take advantage of the large form factor. The beautiful IPS display, gorgeous aluminum body, and epic battery life make this a superb tablet. The iPad is ideal for reading, video watching, gaming, and web browsing. No other computer can replicate the tactile and immersive experience of the iPad. However, the iPad failed to top my list because it doesn't fit my lifestyle, since productivity is my most significant issue with the iPad. Multitasking with iOS 4.2 can't replicate the same experience on a MacBook, and the virtual keyboard is still difficult to use for an extended period of time. However, at $499, the iPad is a reasonably priced addition to my computing lifestyle, and with 3G, it's the only large computing device that I have that is always connected on the go. For number two, I've listed the 11.6 MacBook Air. 
I haven't been this enthusiastic about a Mac since my first iMac. I absolutely love the form factor and continue to be amazed by its capabilities despite its meager hardware specs. The thin, lightweight design gives way to a comfortable, angled palm rest, vivid, high-resolution display, full keyboard, and excellent battery life. The standard SSD or solid-state drive means that the MacBook Air is quick to boot, wake from standby, and load apps, although storage is small, topping out at only 256 gigabytes. The MacBook Air isn't for everybody. It's not a great primary computer, instead should be considered a supplement to a desktop computer, which has more storage, processing power, and a built-in optical drive. If there was one thing I miss on the MacBook Air, it's the backlighted keyboard and an SD card slot. Otherwise, I think this is the first laptop that fits my needs perfectly. And for number one, I've chosen the iPhone 4. Although it came to market with a notorious antenna issue, often dubbed Antenna Gate, which I've demonstrated on my channel previously, the problem is a non-issue for me since I always have a case on my iPhone. Now with that out of the way, I can say that this is the only product in the top five that I consider to be flawless. From the gorgeous IPS Retina display, to the silky smooth performance of the operating system, to the incredible and worry-free battery life, to the high quality 5 megapixel camera with flash and HDR, and right down to the beautiful glass and steel design that sets it above all other handsets. This is one highly polished Apple product that never ceases to thrill and amaze me every day. And for that, the iPhone 4 is my favorite Apple device of 2010. So there we have it guys, that's my top five picks for Apple products in 2010. So once again guys, I just wanna thank you very much for following me in 2010. And I know it's been a very busy year for Apple products and I don't expect 2011 to be any different so I really look forward to being there for every new product and I hope you guys will be as well. So once again guys, this is Detroit Borg. Thanks for watching and Happy New Year.